Hi, this is Kevin from Matsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 11 to 15 of the Grey Kangaroo from 2021. The pink and the grey kangaroos are follow-on rounds from the UKMT Intermediate Maths Challenge. So if you do really well in the Intermediate Maths Challenge, then you can go on to take the kangaroo. You will do the grey kangaroo if you're in year nine in England or equivalent years elsewhere, and you will do the pink kangaroo if you're in years 10 uh, or 11. And there are also uh, Olympiad rounds you can qualify for as well, the Cayley, Hamilton and McLaurin papers, again for each of those three uh, different year groups if you do very well in the math challenges. So these questions are kind of a harder version of IMC papers, so they are also great preparation if you're taking the intermediate math challenge. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put all of these questions uh, as well as the solutions and also some video hints into free online courses that you can sign up for by clicking down below. There are courses for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, for Junior, Senior Challenges as well, and for the Kangaroos. And you can take those courses, you can try the questions, uh, you can have a look at the hints, you can check your answers before you watch the video solutions. And it's really the best way to use this content to prepare for the challenges. Unlike here on YouTube, there are no ads or distra distractions over there as well. And there are upgraded courses, go for gold in math challenges, where you can really master the content and get well prepared uh, for the math challenges if you want to. Uh, but the free courses are really substantial and really useful, and you can get a lot just by doing those as well. So I really encourage you to click on the link below and to sign up for one of those courses now. If you'd rather stay here on YouTube, of course, you're very welcome. Um, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get the content out there. Um, so let's get on uh, with these questions now. It looks a bit like we don't have enough information to answer this question at first, uh, but if in doubt, just label something and start working things out. Uh, so uh, I'm going to call this uh, square x, or it's side length x, and so it would also be x in this direction. And this square has uh, area 1, so it's also got side lengths 1. So that means that uh, this next square would be one unit bigger than x. And now we start to see how this question works, because as I wrap around here, right, I get x plus 1 in this direction as well, because that's a square, uh, and then this is an extra one unit, so sort of every time I turn a corner, I add one unit to the side length of the square, and this next one is x plus 2. And again, it's a square, so this length is x plus 2. When I add the extra unit in, I get that this is x plus 3, and so that this distance here must also be uh, x plus 3. Okay, so what we can see, sort of looking uh, along uh, the total, now let's just look at the total lengths, counting top and bottom, right on the top I've got x plus 1 plus x plus h, right, counting like this length plus this length plus this length, that must be the same as x plus 2 plus x plus 3, okay, uh, so I've got 2x plus 1 plus h equals 2x plus 5, and two x's cancel, and subtracting one from each side, we must get uh, h equals four, and so the answer is c, four. It's a bit of a fine balance in maths challenge questions between when you want to apply trial and error and when you want to do something kind of more rigorously. And for me, this is a good example of one where actually trial and error is uh, the best uh, method, and I think it's the fastest method. So what I notice here is that there are 20 questions in this quiz. I get seven for each correct answer. I've got to score at least 100 points. And that's quite a lot of points, right? So, uh, you know, what uh, So what multiple of seven is, is close to 100, right? 14 uh, times seven is 98. So I've got to get more than uh, 14 questions, right? 15 times seven is 105. Now notice, um, I don't get uh, anything awarded or deducted for questions uh, left blank. So I don't have to answer all the questions here. What I need, though, is to be to get 100 points, is to be able to deduct four points a certain number of times and get down to 100. So I need the excess over 100 here to be a multiple of four. So I'm just going to keep um, trying here. So 16 uh, times 7 would give me 112. And look, there it is. If I also have uh, three lots of four-point deductions, that would give me minus 12 here, and that would bring the score to 100. So 16 correct answers and uh, three wrong answers gives me 19 answers in total, 
and there must have been one left blank, and so the answer is B. Again, for a math challenge question, we can assume, once we've got an answer, that it's a unique answer, otherwise this question wouldn't make sense. So I just made the diagram very slightly bigger here. Um, we've got this strip of paper that's 4 by 13, and it's folded uh, here at 45 degrees. Uh, so, uh, okay, so clearly we get an isosceles uh, triangle here, and these are also 45 and 45 on this side. Um, so definitely, whatever this length is, is equal to this length. And of course, we know that length, that's 4, uh, and that's uh, 4 as well. Okay, so... Uh, let's think about what happens if I uh, unfold this then. Well, I've got the sort of section of P, and I've got this section here, and then I've got the section uh, with Q, and this means that this folded uh, down area here is going to be 4 across. We know that the area of Q is half the area of P, or the area of P is twice the area of Q. They're both rectangles, but they've got the same height, right? So. Uh, so whatever this length here is, x, must be double the uh, length here, uh, 1 half x. Okay. So what we can see uh, is that we must have x plus 4 plus 1 half x. That's counting these, you know, these uh, things uh, separately. In total, that's equal to 13. So I've got x and a half x, that's 1 and a half x, or 3 over 2x. That will be equal to 9. Dividing by 3 and timesing by 2 here gives us that x equals 6, and so the answer is C. So this is another good example of a math challenge question with a little bit of a hack. Okay, It says the box of fruit contains twice as many apples as pears, and the answer to this question can't really depend on how many apples and pears there actually are. So as a first uh, attempt here, I would just wonder if I can solve this by just saying, well, what if there's just two apples and a pear? right? Um, it says that one of the statements always has to be true, uh, so um, let me just have a look and see if uh, any of these statements are false for this combination. Right? Um, so Chris is going to um, take twice as many pieces of fruit as Lily, so he can either take two apples, he could take, uh, or he can take uh, an apple and a pear. Right? That's really the only options here. Right? He's got to take two and Lily takes one. Um, so does he have to take at least one pear? No, he could take two apples. So statement A is not always true. He took twice as many apples as pears. Is that uh, al always um, true? In fact, no, it's not true in uh, either of these cases here. He's taken um, infinitely many more apples in this case and the same number in this one. So that one's not true in general. He took twice as many apples as Lily. Uh, well, um, in this case, he would take twice as many apples as Lily, but it's possible uh, here that he takes the same number of apples as Lily, right? So actually that's not always true. Um, did he take as many apples as Lily took pears? Well, no, he took two apples here and Lily took one pear, um, so uh, so that one's not true. Did he take as many pears as Lily took apples? Well, um, then, uh, well, he's taken two apples, but well, it must be the right answer, right? Because it, it, we've eliminated everything else. But uh, yes, he he here he took uh, no pears and um, Lily took no apples and here he took uh, one pear and Lily took one apple and so actually that one's true for this one. Uh, now we haven't actually shown that it's true always but even in the simple case we've ruled out options A, B, C and D. So that's not a bad way to start these problems. Of course if you were left with more than one option you would either have to consider a more complicated case or think about it in more generality. Right, in fact if I increase the number of apples and pears here, uh, you can um, make the argument uh, re reasonably uh, easily, you know, if I have, uh, you know, I've got to have twice as many apples as pears, so I'm going to have to have, uh, you know, maybe four apples and two pears, or, you know, I'm going to have, if x is the number of pears, then 2x is the number of apples, and you can make some sort of more general argument based on that. But you see here, we just don't need to do that. Uh, we've got the answer based on this very simple case. So three villages are connected by paths as shown. Um, and uh, let's just label the distances between these different towns as x, uh, y, uh, and z. Then I'm going to write everything down algebraically. So from down end to uphill, the detour by Middleton is one kilometer longer than the direct path. So that means that if I take the direct path plus one, uh, I get the sum of the lengths of the other two paths. So y plus one is equal to x plus z. Um, from d to m, 
the detour is five kilometers longer. So if I take x plus five, I'll get y plus z. And from u to m, uphill to Middleton, the detour is seven kilometers longer than the direct path. So that means that seven plus z equals x plus y. Think very carefully about these statements if it's not totally clear. Now, something really nice happens here, and this happens a lot in math challenge questions, and we've got symmetry in the algebra. So we basically you know, want to solve these equations for x, y, and z, but a set of three simultaneous equations in general can be quite hard. Now, if you start playing around with it, you probably eventually eliminate the, you know, the variables and, and find something. But when you've got symmetry here, right? I've got x, z, y, z, x, y, I've got all the possible uh, pairs of the three uh, variables x, y, and z. And on this side, I've just got all the singletons, the x, y, and the z, right? So if I add them together, on this side, I get x plus y plus z equals 13, right? I'm adding all three equations together, right? So sorry, x plus y plus z plus 13. Add all three equations together. On the right-hand side, I get 2x plus 2y plus 2z, right? So if I subtract x plus y plus z from both sides, I get that 13 is x plus y plus z, okay? And uh, that's quite nice. I've got this nice symmetric thing that tells me that I know the total of all three paths now. So I can now go back to each equation in turn. Let's go back to this first one, right? And I've got x plus z uh, minus y is equal to 1 if I just subtract y from both sides. And I've also got x plus y plus z equals 13. But you see now when I add these together, I get 2x uh, sorry, I get, when I said, I'm not doing to add them together. If I add them together, I would get 2x plus 2z minus 2y, but, uh, and then the y's would cancel out. But actually, I want to do the opposite. I want to subtract them so the x and the z cancel out, right? So let's actually uh, take the bottom one and subtract the top one, right? So the x and the z cancel out, and I get y minus minus y is 2y. 13 minus 1 uh, is 12. So I've now got y uh, is equal uh, to 6. And I can actually just play the same game with the other two. Um, okay, also, once you've worked out one, you could sub substitute y in here and just give yourself some simultaneous equations. But this method has worked very well. So if I do the second equation, I can also just say that uh, y plus z minus x equals 5. And again, I've got x plus y plus z is 13 still. So again, if I take the first one and subtract, so take the second one here and subtract the first one, this time I get 2x equals 8. And so uh, x is equal to 4. And if I do that with this last one here, um, I can have uh, x plus y minus z equals 7, and I've got x plus y plus z equals 13. So again, doing this subtraction, I get 2z equals 6, and z equals 3. Um, so my three numbers here do add to 13, as they should, and the shortest uh, of the three paths has length 3 kilometers, so the answer is C. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some upgraded courses as well with some extra content if you really want to master the challenges you can sign up for those as well but there's loads over there uh, for free so i really hope that i will see you over there soon